Our sun becomes a ring of fire during a solar eclipse. And some nearby comets go sun diving. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. After multiple solar storm launches over the past few days, our sun finally begins to settle down just a little bit. As a matter of fact, we did have a solar storm that hit Earth, but as expected, it was weak, which is what we anticipate when we're still pretty much in solar minimum, just beginning to rise out of solar minimum. So we're gonna expect to see more of these weak solar storm launches here maybe over the next six months or so. Now, as we switch to our front side sun, you can see region 2765 as it's rotating off of the sun's west limb and now we are back to a spotless sun we do have a, a kind of a remnant coronal hole here in the middle of the sun you can see it looks more like potholes and what that means is that we're not going to really get any fast wind from this just more like unsettled wind kind of disturbed conditions and that may not even be able to bring us aurora even down to high latitudes because it's just not going to be enough fast pockets of wind to to cause any ruckus now past that we also have a small filament in the northwestern part of the sun. This region was actually one of the regions that launched a solar storm when it was on the sun's far side. And it looks like that filament channel is beginning to fill up again. You can kind of see a dark filament there, but it's not enough to erupt. I think it's we're not going to worry about getting another solar storm launch from it because it looks pretty stable. Past that, on the sun's east limb, we are beginning to see one of two bright regions rotating into Earth view, and that is boosting the solar flux. We're staying in the low 70s for for solar flux, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. Now, as we switch to the sun's far side, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see those two bright regions, the first of which has already rotated into Earth view, and the second one will rotate into Earth view here over the next couple days. Both of these regions will keep that solar flux boosted, so radio propagation should stay in the marginal range on Earth's day side probably over the next week. However, neither of these regions are flare active so GPS users you should be very happy we don't have any risk for radio blackouts on top of that you can see these are both high latitude regions which means they are activity from the new solar cycle so this is more evidence that our Sun is continuing to wake up are you ready for the ring of fire solar eclipse that's going to happen early Sunday morning now this is an eclipse that's going to happen in parts of Africa and Asia but it's not a total solar eclipse. This is what we call an annular eclipse, and it's when the moon passing in front of the sun isn't quite large enough to shadow out the entire sun, so the rim of the sun peeks through and it looks like this big ring of fire. Now the the peak of this event will occur at 2.40 in the morning Eastern Daylight Time, which is about 6.40 in the morning Universal Time. And so for those of us in the Western Hemisphere, it's going to have to be late night to early morning if you want to catch it live online. So be sure to set your alarm clocks. And if you happen to miss that ring of fire solar eclipse, no worries. That's not the only eye candy gracing the skies this week. We actually have a lot going on when it comes to sun diving comets. In fact, we have the 4,000th comet that was discovered in SOHO's data. Yes, you heard me, 4,000th comet. You can see it right here. And it was followed by the 3,999th comet that made a gorgeous display as it had its close flyby of the sun there. It was seen both in the SOHO view, which is Earth view, but also in stereo's view. You can see it in the chronograph there as well. And if you miss those, no worries, because next week we have Neowise. This comet should be entering the coronagraph fields of view of both SOHO and stereo, and it's going to make its closest approach to the sun on July 3rd, so there's a lots of time yet to watch. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 21st, just a couple hours before that ring of fire solar eclipse is supposed to happen. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe a couple comets, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. 
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. We did just calm down from a solar storm that hit us, but it was very weak. This was a stealthy solar storm and it didn't really disturb us all that much. And so, well, it looks like these conditions are going to continue because we just don't have all that much in the forecast. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 15% chance of minor storm. But this is going to be very sporadic chance of minor storms here and there because we're just not expecting all that much other than these tiny little pockets of fast solar wind. So high latitude aurora photographers don't expect to get much aurora from this. Now mid latitudes we're only expecting unsettled to maybe even normal conditions with only about a 5% chance of active conditions. So overall it looks like aurora photographers you have a nice week to take a break and relax. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, ever since region 2765 rotated around the sun's west limb, we are back to a spotless sun now, and that means everything is in the green for big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Unfortunately, it also means that the solar flux is dipping back down. We're into the high 60s and in low 70s uh, for solar flux, and that means we're hugging the hairy edge of March for radio propagation and until the second bright region rotates into earth view here over the next couple days we're going to continue to see that but then we might pull back up into the low 70s so expect radio propagation on earth's day side to be a little bit poor over the next couple days and then slowly begin to get a little bit better but that's just the way it is because we just don't have a lot of activity right now and then after that eh, things may start going back down into the poor range unless we're able to see more active regions on the sun's far side emerge. Now also because we're still pretty much in solar minimum, solar cycle 25 hasn't started that much yet, we are still getting a higher uh, flux of cosmic rays than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week may be calming down a bit when it comes to solar storms, but that doesn't mean there isn't any eye candy to catch. So your aurora photographers, I know there's not much in the forecast in terms of aurora, but you can still turn your cameras skyward. Remember, we've got that ring of fire solar eclipse early Sunday morning. Be sure to look at that either live, but don't look at it with, directly with your eyes, or catch it online like I will because I'm not in the right location in, in the world. But that's going to be be a cool thing. Plus, we have these sun diving comets, especially Comet Neowise, which over the next week is going to enter Soho's uh, coronagraph field of view and Stereo's field of view, and we should be able to watch it make its close flyby of the sun by July 3rd, so be sure to catch that. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know the sun has gone spotless again, and that means that radio propagation on Earth's side may begin to tank just a little bit, but we do have have a reprieve with those bright regions rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. So just hang on and I think radio propagation will improve here over this next week. Now as far as you GPS users are concerned, well you know what? The solar storming is kind of quiet. There's not a lot going on on that front and the solar flux is remaining pretty low. So GPS pretty much all over the globe should be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.